Hello there. Welcome to day 10 of the IMVU Creator Mass 2019 extravaganza where we make lots, not lots, we make some products, Christmas themed products for IMVU using Blender 2.8. And today we are continuing on with our scarf that we were making. So let's get cracking. So for the eagle eyed amongst you, watch this after the fact or live. Can you spot the, can you spot the uh, error? Let's get rid of the beanie mesh. We've made a scarf that doesn't have, or well, it doesn't properly wrap around the avatar because this back section, oh, I've forgotten to activate, zoom it. This back section shouldn't be on the underhang. It should be coming over the top of here and hanging over the back. So we need to adjust the mesh to accommodate that. So what we can do is we've got a, a natural polygon loop around here and what we can do with this is move this across and create a, an indentation like whoops what mode are we in oh hang on is this um I was just playing with the preferences earlier and i think it still kept them Yes, it has. Whoops, a daisy. It's writing up a tutorial about um, what happens if you don't have a two button mouse, uh, a three button mouse. Right, so let's do that again. Yep, right, so tab. Edges, so what we can do is use this edge drop that down there so it looks like we have a looped cloth here and that we can take around here and use as our uh, as the point from which the back drops down may need to tidy this up a bit but we can do that in a moment So triangulate that. Pull that in like that. What we can do is detach all of this. So whoops, loop select all of that, detach it, which is, where have they moved that? Dagnab it. Looking for split, where's split gone? Oh, there it is. Now that separate. Where's split gone? Oh, there it is. Honestly. So mesh split. The shortcut key for that is Y. And one asks oneself that all the time. Y. 
So press that. That should split that section off. It does. So we can get rid of these two faces. And join these together. So we'll do that with all of these edges. And there's that one on the there that goes to the back there. So vertex, select. Oh, hang on. We want to do it the other way. So we want to... We want these vertices to be to stay put so we select them first select their counterpart and then no it's vertex isn't no it's not where is it oh it's merge vertices at first same again shortcut for that is alt m and it'll bring up the merge menu at first so hang on have we done the i think we've mm, it's, that's the wrong section, isn't it? Because that bit, that bit should go under this section. So this bit, so this is where it gets really complicated when you're trying to, uh, this is what makes clothing and cloth tricky because you can define, describe the shape, the general shape that you want. So we had the general shape but now you have to take into consideration how the cloth is folding and what it's doing res with respect to the fabric itself. So we've got a long piece of fabric here that's wrapped around the neck. So we have to, without actually going through the process of creating a, a highly detailed mesh where the wrap actually does do that, where the mesh actually does do that, like, um, a uh, screw thread. What we're trying to do is approximate the shapes, but in doing that, it can get quite tricky trying to remember, trying to figure out which bit goes where. So this section, that should be over the top of this, or give the impression that that's the case. So what we want to do, so let's detach this, get that separated. Mesh split, right, so let's just move that out of the way for the moment. Because what we want is to move this over here Let's do that shape for the time being. So, get rid of this face. All 
Right, now we should be able to join these. Whoops. Whoops. Just use a shortcut because it's much easier. All right, so that's better. So that's a bit better. So now we've got something that looks as though it's wrapped around underneath. So the front, so this front section is a follow on from this section that is now essentially wrapped around underneath here, underneath this section and goes around the front and drops down underneath this bit. That's terribly, terribly confusing. So let's move this across to give that more of an impression that that's what's going on. Yeah, so that is why clothing is is so much more involved than other products and items because you're not just making a, a shirt or whatever it is that you might be making because obviously you are limited by the amount of structure that you can have on your mesh. So that means you've then got to not only consider how the mesh is shaped with respect to the objects that you're trying to replicate, you've then got to accommodate uh, the cloths behavior in terms of the folds and what the folds in the cloth are doing. So for this section, this section at the top here should really be gathered on the other side of let's hide the head to make this easy to see. Where's the head? And the glasses get rid of those. So this section should really be on this side of the neck. So now we have to 
work out where to put the structure that we've created in relation to the avatar while still doing right so that's going to come out let's bring this out here to give us a bit more room and bring all of that over to this side a little bit more remembering we don't want to be too close to the torso because we've got to keep got to keep in mind that this has to sit on top of other clothing items whoops But as was mentioned yesterday, this is pretty much what clothing in particular is uh, making clothes is about is, is a lot of trial and error trying to get the shapes to work relative to the type of clothing or the items that you're actually making because it doesn't always work first time in fact it rarely works first time So let's bring this side in. Right, so we don't need to put, um, we don't need to cut the the middle section out here. Don't necessarily need to do that. But uh, what we can do, that it, when I say cut, I mean so we don't. The, there doesn't need to be a hole here, like we've got at the top of the head. Uh, but what we can do, 
Snap. Snap. You can double check that that's created just a set of vertices and not done what it did last time. It's okay. So get rid of these two, collapse those two vertices together. So just select everything, mesh, clean up, vertex. Then what we could do is add another cut. And just pull that down into the neck. So that creates the impression of fabric that's wrapped around the neck without necessarily putting a hole there. Which we don't specifically need. Definitely. So let's just tidy this up a little bit. something. Triangulate that face, reorientate the edge, let's make this fold a bit deeper. Oops. So we're looking at this area here where the cloth is effectively looping back on itself in order to go underneath the back. So this bit is where there's going to be uh, essentially a scrunched up area of fabric underneath the chin or it is the chin yeah
we don't want to add too much structure. go that's it just got to reorganize the edges to make something that's more that gives a better impression of what's actually going on so we've now got an edge that although because this is low poly it terminates down here but we've got an edge that essentially is giving the impression that it's looping back on itself. So we've got a fold of cloth under here and this sitting on top. Right, so there's a bit of awkward shape there, so triangulate that, rotate the edge, so now we've, oh and there, so we create a polygon out of that, so we've now got an edge. It travels up and around. So we can probably get rid of these, maybe, yeah. So if we want to, so that edge, so if we follow that edge, so what it should do is follow around there, so we might be able to just get rid of this edge and reorganize that. So double tap G key to edge slide. So yeah, so that's the that's the edge of our cloth that and then here it doubles back on itself and goes back under. So 
so we didn't need this edge. We didn't need this edge. So we can get rid of that. So double tap just to merge, uh, just to edge slide, and then get rid of the clean up and make some more adjustments. There we go, that's a bit better. Cool, this clothing lark ain't half, uh, ain't half um, tricky. Oops. Yeah, you really have to concentrate. Let's save this. Save. Save as. And we are number six. Yes, yeah, so we need to add a, an edge loop down the back here just to resolve this section. So what we've got then up the back, loops round, underneath and then drops down the front. So, just save over that again. 
So with the previous one. So that's the previous version. And although we have the shapes and the mass in place in terms of what it is that we're actually trying to achieve, just that little uh, oversight. So we've got that dropping down from underneath this top section. But we also had the back doing the same thing. And of course, if a scarf is wrapped around the neck, then there needs to be some overlap somewhere. So this has this has to have overlapped the back somewhere. So that's probably going to do something like that. So that means you have to, as we've just been doing, cut the mesh or manipulate the mesh to change its shape so that this section uh, looks to be underneath this section. Otherwise it just doesn't it doesn't look right. It looks okay on first impressions when you just look at it as an object but when you actually start to it's one of those um, um, it's not uncanny valley the item looks okay but there's just something not right with it and it's the fact that there are two drops that uh, emanate from underneath the folds on the top so that's one of those things that you have to you have to watch out for with clothing in particular because you as as has been said that whilst you are designing the product in terms of it being a shirt or a jacket you have to pay attention to the way that the uh, within the limited confines of the amount of vertices that we've got to be able to describe shapes you have to pay attention or be aware of these anomalies that can crop up just because you're just trying to shape something the way that you are expecting it to look so from a from a shape perspective that looks fine but from an actual object's perspective in terms of that being a scarf that's wrapped around the avatar's neck there has to be an indentation in this section that goes underneath or gives the impression of going underneath this drop which is now what we've just been doing and the silence whilst doing that is indicative of how complicated that can be in terms of the amount of thinking that you have to do to get the shapes right. So yeah, clothing is it's one of the, the most requested things for tutorials but it's actually one of the most difficult types of product to make um, and it's one of those things that if you don't get it right the first time in terms of what you're expecting it to do it can just put put you off for good Whoops. So this this is just a scarf. This this is just a scarf. So if you imagine what this would be like, the process would be like if you were doing something far more complicated.
but a lot of it is just what's being done now it's just selecting individual vertexes individual edges and just pushing them around to get them into the shape that's needed so we can add a loop cut let's do it oh no it's going to go around there so we'll have to do it manually let's do it another way so edges just select the edges that we want to split And just edge subdivide. Triangulate. Reorganize. So that's returning that back to a quad. And then we can start just adding a bit more shape to this back section. Same with the front edges. And split, subdivide. We quad that. So the shortcut for that is Alt plus J. Whoops, we forgot to do that bottom edge. So tidy that face up. Control T, triangulate. Control T, tarat, triangulate. Select and then Alt J. Turn them back into quads. So let's shift that over there so that we can create
going to have to accommodate the boobs. So of course this matters with unisex products, so you couldn't use this scarf with a male avatar because you're, whoops, you're working around the anatomy of the avatar. So collapse that, let's quad that, quad that, reorganize that, quad that, and quad that. And we're almost there. Oops. And this, of course, is one of the problems with the tutorials, is that this has taken an hour and a half yesterday, and we're up to 50 minutes today. So there isn't a quick way of showing this sort of stuff because the a lot of the tutorials are um, succinct versions of longer tutorials and a lot of the things that you see being done don't necessarily make sense in isolation when they are jump cuts there are jump cuts between this is what you do at this point this is what you do at this point because you don't see the context. But to see the context, it takes an hour and a half, two hours, three hours to make something as simple as this, relatively speaking, something as simple as this with all the context so that you can actually see exactly how everything is supposed to sort of fit together as a process. Right, I think we've got a scarf. A thick woolen scarf that matches a big thick woolen beanie. So if we have the scarf and then we put the beanie on. So that now matches our beanie. Could even make it thicker. So when we say a thick woolen beanie, we mean it.
Oops. So there we go, there's our thick woolen beanie scarf to match our thick woolen beanie. So that took a bit of doing. Uh, so, save the file, save as number seven. So this doesn't have a material yet. No, it doesn't. So what we'll do is add a material, do the UV maps, and then we'll weight this, weight paint it, or vertex groups, depending on your uh, preference. And uh, we'll take a look at how it deforms with the mesh. Uh, not the mesh, the uh, armature. So let's add some smoothing to this. So object, shade smooth, and that just smooths it. And then what we'll want to do, there's still a bit more work to be done on this, but at this point, what we can do is uh, UV map materials, weight paint, and just start testing the articulation of the mesh with respect to the armatures or the armature just so that we can see how the project is progressing because what we then need to do is adjust the mesh uh, in various places to give us more structure that will allow the object to deform uh, not properly but deform well without collapsing in on itself so that that's the next step so Essentially what you do is block out and do your first pass, I suppose you could call this. This is the first pass, so we've got to a point where we've actually got the object that we actually wanted to mesh, which is a scarf, and it looks like a scarf. And the next step, where's the beanie gone? The next step is to uh, weight paint it, texture it, materials, and test it to make sure it deforms as we might be expecting and we can then add structure to the object to help with the deformation how it deforms when the skeleton moves so if we select the skeleton now and look at what the mesh uh, the avatar does whoops that's the wrong control bone we have to watch how if we look at the arm of the armature that the arm of the avatar mesh how that uh, crinkles and warps and deforms as the skeleton controls it we have to start looking at that so that we've got enough structure in our scarf to be able to do the same sort of thing So hide that. So our material first. So let's just save over that again. Save over it. Right. So material. Uh, material properties. There's no material there because we need a separate material from the beanie. We don't want to use the same um, beanie material. So click the new button. That'll populate the panel and it'll give us. It'll make the. It won't affect the mesh at the moment. Uh, Use all nodes, so make sure that's active. Uh, material, so for this we want this to be, so you can change the name, clicking the, that word or double clicking, doesn't matter either or. We want this to be beanie scarf, space, square brackets, zero, close square brackets. 
So that's our material name. That's compatible for IMVU. So into shading. Zoom out. Might have to do some adjustments to the 3D view. So top half is the preview. Bottom half is the material editor. And we're only creating a very simple basic material here. So what we need to do from the add menu, add texture, image texture, texture, image texture. That'll give us this node, drop that into place and we can connect it color to base color. And the mesh will go black because there's no material there. Uh, now for this, let's see. A 256 by 512 will probably be enough. So click the new button. That'll give us the new image properties. Change the name. Beanie Scarf. Scarf. We want the width to be 512, the height to be 256. We don't need alpha. Generated type, just a UV grid is fine. And then OK. And as the object that we originally started with had a default UV map, the texture has appeared on the mesh. but it's not properly UV mapped. So that's what we now have to do. So UV editing, and we can take a look at, oops. So when you switch views, each workspace, each of these workspaces has its own predefined point of view of the various editors and areas that the workspace is comprised of. So we're in UV editing right now. And this is essentially a context, an editing context. So we have on the left is a UV editor. And on the right, we have the 3D view. But the 3D view isn't using the settings that we've been using in the main 3D view in layout because Blender has its own defaults for each of these workspaces. So when we switch, we have to reset or rejig the views to get what we were using to make it more manageable to work with. Right, so with that done, let's have a look at the UV map. So what we want to do is select all. Ooh, and that is the mess that is our UV map. So that's the default map. That's, uh, did we start with the cube? We started with the cube. So that's the default UV map that's a that starts as a cube. It actually starts, uh, the default UV map for a cube is a cruciform like that. So after all this editing and manipulation it ends up like that. So what we now have to do is tidy that up. Tidy that up using seams. We're going to mark some seams and a few other things. So what we're likely going to do here is break this bottom section off. So this will be a UV map on its own, uh, a UV section on its own. And then the top will be a UV section on its own, but we might be able to split it in this area and use the fact that there's a, a sort of a natural seam or a natural edge running along here 
uh, and split that so that hopefully this will lay this UV map section out a bit uh, flatter, making it easier to paint textures on. So again, as with the meshing, it's a bit of trial and error to get UV maps sorted out for objects like this. So for that, we need seams. So what we're going to do is switch to edge mode and we're going to select a couple of edges. We're also going to split we're also going to do, well, there's two, so, uh, yeah, so here's another section, uh, another consideration. So we're going to create a UV section of this and a UV section of this top part. But we also need to, within this section, we also need to split it so it lays out flat in the UV. So if we unwrap this now, it will just be squashed together as a UV map like that, but we need it to be flat like this side. To do that, we'll also add a seam down the back edge here, which is going to be largely hidden from view. So we want to hide the fact that there's a seam going to be placed that will allow us to lay the flat the, the map out flat. Uh, actually, let's do um, select all. Let's just do a an initial map so that we can see what it currently would look like if we just UV map this as is. So UV unwrap, and that's what the result is like. It doesn't look too bad. But we've lost a lot of we've lost a lot of detail here and down at the front as well. Because these sections are these bits and that bit. So we've got these large UVs squashed down into this tiny tiny section. And the same here which means that there's probably less than six pixels. So six tiny pixels on the image. They are spread across this entire structure, front and back for the various sections. So we need to correct those. And this is why we, uh, this is why we use seams to unwrap our objects, to flatten them out and make sure that uh, we get as much space as we can allotted to the various areas of the mesh. So let's add a seam down the back here first and then down the back here. So the inside edge is used for this because it's not generally going to be facing outwards so it's not going to be an edge that's going to be seen all the time. So if we Add a seam to those, so we've marked them out, uh, we've selected them. Now we want edge, mark seam, and they'll highlight orange, indicating that a seam has been marked. So if we now look at what's been done to that from a UV perspective, so all, then unwrap that. Let's see what that does. Whoops. So it completely changed the UV. So that's the UV map, and in fact, you could probably just go with that. Hmm, there we are, you see, wasn't expecting that. So that doesn't look too bad, so let's try separating this section see what that does so there's no faces at the back here so yes that's that's another thing that we have to sort out we have to sort out these gaps so 
So select the edges, edge, mark seam. So that will now separate that from the rest. So select all, so that's our UV map at the moment. Unwrap. And that's now separated our UV into two sections. So doing that would basically mean that you could paint shadows on the top section here and that would appear on the mesh and we'd have a clean hard edge running along the top there. But this also increases the amount of texture space that we've got. Because what we can now do, use our widget Yeah, let's turn it that way. Let's increase its size. So we get as much space as we can. Out of the UV map. Yeah, that's not going to. But we do want to try and keep. scaling similar this is where if I and you had 256 by 256 textures that would be much more So we've got a bit of space at the top there that could be used for something else. So that's our basic UV map. And material. It's back to layout. So it now matches the beanie. So let's save that. Save as eight. So now comes the fun part. weight painting. So we need the skeleton for this. Skeleton. Uh, so we have to mesh modifiers add an armature modifier and then we should be able to just click the input box now and it's female 03 master root so this skeleton let's double check that This skeleton will now start to control the mesh. Depending on vertex painting, not vertex, weight painting. 
So to do that, select your mesh and the armature. I think it's mesh, uh, armature first, mesh second. Both of them have to be in object mode and then select weight paint. And what this does is it allows us to select a bone and then paint automatically paint and insert watch uh, watch what happens in the vertex group ha uh, section we just click on the object let's enable and we paint values to the object which automatically places a vertex group, a corresponding vertex group in the vertex group section. So if we then select the skeleton pose mode, just rotate that bone, our scarf, scarf, our scarf now manipulates or articulates with the armature. And that is in essence, I say all weight painting is, but that is in essence all that weight painting is. The tricky part is getting all the weight values right so the mesh deforms the way that you expect it to. So in the same way that meshing something like the scarf is a relatively straightforward process because you just select uh, select vertexes and manipulate them. The tricky part is making them uh, is manipulating them in a way that it ends up looking like whatever it is that you are trying to create. So let's do some weight painting. So see how it's adding a new group. based on the bone that is selected and then painted. So that one will probably, let's disable or hide top, bottom, beanie, is the head already hidden? Yeah, the head's already hidden. So you're also, with weight painting, making assessments as to what bones. So for some things, it's pretty straightforward. So with the back, for example, the bone that we've got selected is spine 04, yes, spine 04, which easily corresponds to this section at the top here. Spine 03, the bone at the bottom, corresponds to that section, and so on down the back of the mesh. But for other bits, so this is spine 04, but we've now got this very complicated section that essentially falls within the scope of that bone and we have to assess which one of these vertexes is going to be controlled by that bone and the more bones in a particular area so we've got the clavicles as well here so that means potentially these vertices and on the other side, we've got these vertices because the bone doesn't just control the immediate vertexes that are immediately near them. It also potentially influences, say, a, a vertex down here or a vertex all the way up here, depending on how the mesh is supposed to deform. So as with meshing, weight painting is similarly bit of trial and error.
and it's best at, by default to just use sidebar so this is where the tools are the weight painting tools in terms of the values and what you can do with the brush sidebar and then you want tool and it gives us all these options and stick to the defaults for the for, for when you first start so just the weight value is one which means it's full uh, it's fully um, weighted uh, influence that's the word I was looking for it's influencing the particular vertex by a hundred percent if it's zero it goes well this dark blue and there used to be a way to um Oh, you can't do it now. So one, it'll be pale blue, really, really pale blue. I don't know how well that'll come across. Two, it starts to become a stronger sort of greenish yellow, but that changes the degree to which a bone influences something. But it's best to stick initially with just full influence. So leave it at one. And then you can adjust the values later. So if you make a mistake, uh, flip the weight value to zero and just paint over the spots that you don't want to influence with a particular bone that's set. And what that does is it changes. Whoops. It prevents other bones influencing those spots. Right, so clavicle so we might have to continue this tomorrow because I don't think we're going to get this done within the hour and a half or so that we've got so I'll just knock this out so that we can see something and see how all of this works and then we will finish it off tomorrow so for example right so we've got We've got the clavicle influencing this selection. So if we move the clavicle, it'll move that entire section of the mesh. But what we also want to do is have the chest influence this section of the mesh. And in doing that, what we've done is spread the influence of the armature well yeah so spread spread the influence of the bones to two areas of the mesh so it now means that if we select the clavicle again and manipulate that it won't deform as much as it did before because the Influence is now being shared between two bones. So if we move the Spino 4, we also get the same sort of thing at the top there because it's moving the clavicle as well as part of that bone group. Whoops. And this is essentially all 
weight painting is. It's just going through the mesh, painting values to determine which sections move and which don't. And just trial and error, particularly for these sorts of complex objects, to see what happens. So let's do those. Yeah, so let's capture that one and that one. That one and that one. So if you move that bone that we've got selected, it's going to move all of that because there are bones. So it's, there's a <clears throat> there's a chain of bones. Uh, hierarchy is that's the bottom, and we're moving up and spreading out. So we're moving up. So any bone that's moved down here also controls everything that's up here. But as you go up the skeleton, so at this bone, these at the bottom don't move, but everything above that does. So all the weight painting values are relative to the bone that's being manipulated, but bones below in the hierarchy also influence mesh deformation above the hierarchy because it's, uh, it's all about what the vertexes are doing and how many bones influence a particular vertex. So this one that's selected, whoops, this one that's selected, that we've got uh, highlighted rather, theoretically could be influenced by that bone, that bone, that bone, and potentially that bone. And if that were the case, it would mean that it would move relatively little depending on which bone is being, come on, which bone is actually being manipulated. So as you move up, whichever bone is selected will manipulate the mesh to varying degrees. And uh, so I think, yes, we'll have to continue this tomorrow because we're coming up on an hour and a half. Uh, so save the file, save as number nine and then we'll continue this tomorrow continue with the weight painting and check out all the mesh deformation and then continue adding detail where it's needed to round the shape a bit more make it look nicer and uh, that will be it so that'll be six hours I guess so yesterday today and tomorrow will be on this uh, Christmas scarf this beanie scarf so yeah we'll call it quits there and we will continue uh, we'll continue UV uh, not UV mapping we'll continue weight painting oh hi frenzy I only just saw you there fashionably late as usual uh, so we'll call it quits and uh, we shall see you back here tomorrow. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, you're laughing now. Yes, we're, we're going. We've been going for about an hour and a half. So that's, that's about uh, fashionably early. Uh -huh. Oh, well, yes. Uh, Time-wise, yeah, it's 4.30 where you are. Uh, right, so... On that note, thank you for watching, Lurkers, and thank you, Frenzy, for popping in right at the very end. 
and uh, we shall see you on the next stream which will be create a mass day 11 wow so yes 11 so two more days and we're done because it'll be christmas or create a mass right so thanks for watching everyone and we shall see you yeah night night frenzy uh we shall see you tomorrow so bye for now everyone